Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Perfect. I was a young boy, so I learned how to project a long time ago. Anyway, so I'm from sports medicine, kinesiology, Jennifer, it's all known me, but so I decided to cover more than one gold standard, and that's basically because it's easier for me to explain my project by going through some of the different opinions that um, my class had to cover. So I have listed up there all the gold standards, but the big thing was the challenging problem or question. So the big challenging problem and question in sports medicine is prevention. So for any of you guys who are Golden State Warriors fans, you guys will know Kevin Durant is out. So he's been out for like a month, and obviously him sitting on the bench is costing the team millions of dollars. So the job in sports medicine, what I try to teach my students is, yes, you do learn how to rehabilitate, but we also want to know how can we prevent the problem from happening. And that's kind of where medicine is moving, not towards treating, but prevention. So the question that they had to answer was, how does an emphasis on prevention affect athletic So it was the prevention versus rehabilitation. So my students, for their student choice and voice, they were able to pick their athlete and their injury. Was named. This is a dislocated elbow. So one of them actually, I know some people are looking here like, no, his elbow is not pointing in the right direction. So that's dislocated elbow. It's hundred pins with the hamstring strain. So a lot of the students either picked athletes that. They had their, like their team it was from their favorite team, or just an injury that they had an interest, or maybe they suffered the injury before. And they did it on professional athletes because it's easier to find information on a professional athlete online versus trying to get information about your best friend who may be injured. So they were given this just to kind of sum it up. They tried to research the injury. Um, signs and symptoms, and then they have to document. So in this class, they learn how to document injuries, and they use the same documentation that you would use. Um, doctors would use physical therapists, so they learn how to document the injury. Then they have to look at two rehabilitation protocols and compare. And then from there, they design a rehabilitation program and design a prevention program. So they did all this, it probably took us about a month to actually <coughs> The project but they were learning all this stuff at, throughout the year so this was kind of like their end of the semester so critique and revision the scary thing for them was when they found out they actually have to present this to the public and the public was an expert panel so I actually brought in physical therapists and athletic trainers that actually critiqued their project so people in the field were telling them hey, this is a good idea, or we're not doing this type of treatment anymore, you shouldn't do it. So when they found that out, they had decided that they wanted to do the presentation in front of the class. So I said, that's a smart idea. Let's not pick the first presentation to be cold turkey, because when I saw it the first time, I was kind of scared. But <laughs> so, they were given this because sometimes when they're sitting there and doing someone's doing a presentation, students need like they need sometimes some guidance. So I gave them this form that they needed to complete while each of the groups were given a feedback. And I said, please give constructive, because sometimes constructive to them is, ah, oh, that stinks. You need to use that. So it's like, no, we need to use constructive words that are going to help them fix their problem. So. They did one presentation and decided, ooh, we're not that good. So two weeks later, they fixed it, and then they did a presentation against the class. So this was a form that they had to complete. So their public products. So this is, like I said, they had an expert panel that came in. So these are some physical therapists and athletic trainers who were in the back of the class, and giving them feedback after each one of their products. So, and then after that, they kind of got to have a question and answer here and do a, kind of a round table and ask them, how is it being a sports medicine professional? What types of things should they be doing now so that they can be where some of these people are? Some of them own their own practices. 
or working with professional teams. So they really wanted to get feedback from them. Um, sorry. sorry, I'm going a little fast right now. So this is an example of actually one of the students' projects. I'm going to go through it kind of quickly, but picked Robert Griffin III towards ACL. For those of you who don't know, tearing your ACL 15, 20 years ago almost meant that your career was over. And now they're reconstructing them, and you can be out six to nine months. So it's Robert Griffin III. So their injury choice and research. So they documented their injuries. Um, this is an acronym, POPS, History, Observation, and Palpation Special Test. So they learned how to do all these things and how to document it. And the physical therapists, athletic trainers, doctors were there were looking at this and actually marking and saying, is this really something that we would have in our office? <coughs> so then, like I said, palpation, special test. Then they documented. So they put their soap notes into like PowerPoint just so people can see it as part of a presentation, but they also had to give a hard copy as well. And so their assessment was a person on an ACL screen. And then they looked at two different protocols. Protocols basically tell you how you're supposed to do a rehabilitation program. So they compared the two. And I know some of these terms are like gibberish, but they have all these things that they can read, they actually understand what most of this means, which is impressive considering that was their first semester. So they did all these, looked at, compared the goals, created goals, and then designed a prevention program, which is huge. Prevention program, things you may have noticed, but this is bad form. So I was actually impressed with my class, the students that did this, that they actually recognized that this was wrong. Because a lot of times people see that and say, what's the big deal? But this actually is a predisposes you to tear your ACL. So anyone who kind of walks like this or jumps like that opens them up to ACL tear. And I prompted them to this, they actually were able to recognize this themselves. And then, oh, down here, this is how he tore it. So then from there, they created prevention programs and they looked at ways to prevent it. So what are reasons why it happens and then ways to prevent it. So they did strength, balance exercises, jumping, and agility. And agility is like ladders going from side to side. And these were all the exercises that they created themselves. So taught them this, but then they created the prevention program themselves. And then ultimately had to answer, why do we even need to prevent injuries? And how do we? And then that was their prevention. And of course, I make them cite their sources because they need to get used to doing that, especially like when you're in college and you don't cite your sources. Plagiarism and you can get kicked out of school. So they look at me like, okay, we'll do it because we don't want to get kicked out of school. So, last thing, I make them reflect, make them think about you've done this project for a month, now how did you feel about it? So they'll do, they score their group members, because as we know, we've all worked in groups. There's some people who are carrying the load and some people who are the load. So, just wanted to basically let them know, like, hey, this person I know is your friend, but I've been watching you guys the whole class period, too. And I kind of, I basically told them, if you give someone a good grade, but I know he basically doesn't deserve that grade, I'm going to take it off of yours. So then they got really honest. I started getting paragraphs. So, no. so they graded their group members, and then they reflected on, like, how were they as a team? Because sometimes you could say, oh, this person wasn't good, but were you a good contributor to the group as well? Last thing, so I did, one of the things for the gold standard teaching was this rubric that they were given to with the project as well. So they had this rubric, so they knew what I was looking for and what I was expecting. So that's how I got a nice product, like, because they had to look back and recheck and revise and 